makes future focused vision. To find ideas that become solutions to the world's most pressing concerns. Innovation and creativity are the sparks that ignite to transform lives and society. And these need space to grow. We are home to these creative and innovative sparks. Our work goes beyond the disciplines across our nine faculties, seven campuses, and being one of Africa's top business schools. As an African global university, we stand proudly among the world's top a universities. For we remain at the forefront of universal discoveries and provide authentically African solutions to the world's greatest challenges and opportunities. We are pioneers in our fields, from the humanities to cutting-edge technologies, continually seeking ways to improve the world around us. Our hybrid learning systems provide quality education that enables graduates to become adaptable game changers. We have molded nearly half a million alumni who have made their mark locally and internationally, and we continue to inspire and equip our students to uphold our firmly rooted culture of excellence. At the heart of what we do is our people. They are creative, critical thinkers who can shape society for the better. Because that is how we teach, learn, innovate, impact and live. We are the University of Pretoria. Good morning, guests. I'm Professor Lucy Muleleki. I'm a professor in the Department of Biochemistry, Genetics, and Microbiology, and the program director for this event. I'd like to make the following announcements before the official program commences. We kindly request that you switch off your cell phones for the full duration of the ceremony. The audience will be requ requested to rise when the academic procession enters. When the academic procession enters the auditorium, and to remain standing until you are requested to take your seats again. At the end of the ceremony, the audience will once again be requested to stand and to remain standing until the procession has left the auditorium. At the conclusion of the official inauguration ceremony, everyone present here is invited to the reception that will take place outside in the foyer of the Ola. We have catered for those with special food preferences. Please just ask any of the waiters to direct you to the appropriate food station. The restrooms are just outside, um, outside the foyer. And ladies, go to the left when you exit, and the men to the right. Unfortunately, the Minister of Higher Education, Science, and Innovation couldn't be here with us today. However, the Deputy Director General, Dr. Marcia Soitekwa, will deliver a message on his behalf. Thank you.
by the powers vested in me, I declare this occasion a legal congregation of the University of Pretoria. Please take your seats. Guests, we request you to join us in silent prayer or meditation to give thanks for the opportunity of the investiture of a new chancellor. Thank you.
As Vice Chancellor and Principal of the Investor of Pretoria, I extend a hearty welcome to all attending this inauguration ceremony of the new Chancellor. We are particularly grateful for the presence of various dignitaries who have joined us for this auspicious occasion. I would like to recognize the following people who have joined in the academic procession. Chancellors, our previous Chancellor, Professor Wiseman Kushu, the Chair of our own University Council, Chairs of Council from other universities, members of the University Council, members of the Executive Management of the University of Pretoria, deans and deputy deans of our faculties, heads of departments, directors of our support services departments, members of the University of Pretoria Senate, chair of the Convocation Advisory Board, the student representative president, representative of the unions. Other guests related to our university include current and former council members, members of staff, both academic and from the professional service departments, members of the student representative council, members of the unions, members of the convocation board, alumni, many distinguished guests from outside the University of Pretoria have joined us today. These include vice chancellors and principals of other universities, members of the diplomatic corps, deputy chief justice, emeritus, deputy director general office of the president, secretary general of the chief justice, judges from the constitutional court, members of government at the national, local, provincial levels, representatives from Council on Higher Education, various private companies, and among these, our, our special donor companies. Heads from our neighboring schools, members of the media, the spouses and partners of the dignitaries from outside the University of Pretoria who are attending today's function. A special word of welcome to those of you who have joined the proceedings online. This is the way of the world these days. And last but certainly not least, I would like especially to welcome all the guests who Emeritus Justice Sisi Kampepe has asked us to specifically invite. They include her husband, family, and close friends and colleagues. You are all very welcome here this morning. We are delighted about Justice Kampepe's appointment, which came into effect on 28 June this year after her election by the Electoral College of the University, comprising members of council and senate and the president of the convocation. This college met, college met virtually in May explicitly for the purpose of electing the new chancellor by secret ballot. As the 10th chancellor of the University of Pretoria, she will serve in the position for five years with the possibility of appointment for a further consecutive term subject to due process. With a trailblazing career spanning over 40 years, Justice Campempe's legacy and the indelible mark she has made in legal circles is widely recognized. During her time on the bench, she eloquently developed jurisprudence in the rights of women, children, and vulnerable members of society, and entrenched the legal duty to prohibit gender-based violence. Her legendary last two judgments before retiring related to the work of state capture, related to the work of the state capture commission of inquiry. These judgments serve to strengthen the rule of law and the principle of equality before the law. Born in Soweto, Justice Kampempe obtained a BPROC from the University of Zululand before traveling abroad to further her studies. She graduated with an LLM degree from Harvard University, and later served at Bauman Gilliflan. She started her own practice under the name S.V. Kampempe Attorneys, one of the few black labor law firms in the country at the time. She became renowned for her defense of workers against unjust laws and unfair employment practices. Throughout her career, she has served in a number of positions of note. These included being appointed by the former President Nelson Mandela as one of the commissioners of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in 1995. Her judicial career commenced in December 2000 with the elevation to the Apex Court of the Republic, the Constitutional Court, in 2009. Justice Campempe embodies all of the values which we espouse at the University of Pretoria, and we are truly grateful to have this extraordinary South African icon 
as our chancellor. She has much to contribute to our institution, and I look forward to working alongside her as we relentlessly pursue the lofty goals which we have set to achieve in our 15-year long-term strategy, which serves as a blueprint for the university's role as a national asset and guides its responses to national, regional, continental, and global challenges and priorities. We are now in the third and final phase of what we call UP 2025, and our next five-year plan, Destination 2026 and Beyond, presents an opportunity to prepare future pathways as we head towards reimagining and repositioning the University of Pretoria as a leading research intensive university in Africa, recognized internationally for its quality, relevance, and impact, and also for developing people, creating knowledge, and making a difference locally and globally. In Justice Campaign Bay, we have a leader who recognizes our unique positioning and who's willing to go the extra mile to help us achieve our vision. One of the investor Pretoria's key strategic goals to, is to foster and sustain a transformed, inclusive, and equitable university community. I look forward to Justice Campaign's contribution to dynamic approaches and solutions that will enable us to continue on our path towards building a new society that is non-racist, non-sexist, democratic, just, equal, and prosperous. As a black woman, Justice Campaign has fought throughout her career for the preferential access to opportunities previously denied, as in her words, and I quote, a culture of justification demands it, close quote. She chose a life in the law because she recognized early on how apartheid affected every part of her life. She also lived with the knowledge that despite having graduated cum laude, law was not seen as, a, as, as, a, as being for women. Her fierce determination to defend the rights of those who have no voice has seen many outstanding judgments made throughout her time in the judiciary. In the Makai judgment of March 2011, Constitutional Court found that mine workers who suffer from compensatable occupational lung diseases are entitled to institute civil claims against their former employers for additional compensation. As a result of this decision, South Africa saw the biggest class action lawsuit in its history by mine workers against mining companies. In the Teddy Bay judgment of October 2013, sexual conduct between adolescent ch consenting children aged under 16 years was decriminalized, with Justice Campempe expressing that there was a need to ensure that in attempting to guide and protect our children, our interventions should not expose them to harsh circumstances, which can only have adverse effects on their development. A person's character can often be judged by how they treat those around them. Former law clerks to Justice Campempe have expressed that, and I quote, her contribution to the constitutional project of advancing human dignity and substantive equality is not only found in her substantial jurisprudence, but it is also found in how she lives out her daily life. No matter how busy or stressful it is, it is to work with, uh, to, it is with work, judge is always calm and composed, close quote. And that open quote, she exudes compassion for every person who crosses her path demanding the highest standards from her clerks because justice requires diligence, close quote. In these vulnerable times, when our country, continent, and the world faces mirrored crises and complex challenges, we desperately need good leaders, leaders who can give us hope and confidence in a robust and sustainable future, and who inspire us and show us how we can be the everyday heroes we need to be in order to effect the change we desire and need to see. Justice Kambebe, we can all agree that you have shown throughout your life that the good work you have done is by no means for yourself, but to help others rise. You have portrayed a selfless commitment to the people of South Africa, and even now in your retirement, you have chosen to continue serving. At the University of Pretoria, we firmly believe that we are a resource to South Africa and beyond, 
and we take pride in producing graduates who are socially conscious, active citizens who address societal issues and positively impact our communities. We know that even beyond the boundaries of knowledge production comes the integrity and responsibility to apply our knowledge and skills to the benefit of all. We welcome how you will significantly add to our story of ongoing positive development as we pursue excellence with zeal, passion, and perseverance and contribute to the next generation of strong and wise leaders. I'll, now, I will introduce to you Justice Emeritus Justice Sisi Kampembe. Emeritus Justice Sisi Kampembe is a retired judge of the Constitutional Court of South Africa. Her judicial career started with the appointment as a judge of the Hauteng Division of the High Court in December 2000. She later served as acting deputy president of the Labor Appeals Court and Labor Court. In October 29, 2009, as I said earlier in my speech, she was appointed to South Africa's Constitutional Court, where she served for 12 years, twice as the acting Deputy Chief Justice. Justice Kampempe served in key positions throughout her career. In 1995, she was appointed by President Nelson Mandela as one of the commissioners of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, otherwise known as the TRC. In 2004, President Thabo Mbeki, president then, appointed her together with Emeritus Deputy Chief Justice Dihanang Moseneke, who is present in the audience, to lead the Judicial Observer Mission during the Zimbabwe elections. From 2005 to 2006, she chaired the Kampempe Commission, an inquiry into the mandate and location of the Directorate of Special Operations, also known as the Scorpions. She was born on 8 January 1957 in Soweto, obtained a BPROC from University of Zululand in 1980, LLM, Harvard Law School in 1982. She began her, her legal career as a legal advisor to the Industrial Aid Society, where she participated in a vacation employment program. Here, she was exposed to the dishonorable employment conditions of black workers. Between 1981 and 1983, she served as a fellow in the Legal Resources Center. 1983, she joined Bowman Gilfland attorneys as a candidate attorney. After being admitted as an attorney in 1995, she established her own law firm, which I referred to earlier on, uh, under the name SV Campempe Attorneys, which was specially renowned for defending the rights of workers against unjust laws and unfair employment uh, practices. She represented unions affiliated to both NACTU and COSATU and was the national legal advisor for SACAO. She was then employed by the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development as Deputy National Director of Public Prosecutions, a post she held from September 1998 to December 1999, shortly before her judicial career began at the Hauteng Division of the High Court. February 20, 2006, the Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Sir Donald McKinnon, seconded here as a member of the Commonwealth Observer Group to the presidential and parliamentary elections in Uganda. She has been a member of several legal and community organizations, including the International Law Society, related to Harvard Law School, the South African Legal Education Program, the Employment Advisory Center, in recognition of her vast and storied contributions to justice and education for all South Africans. The University of Pretoria is proud to install Emeritus Justice Sisi Kampempe as the 10th Chancellor of the University. I now kindly request the Chairperson of the University Council, Mr. Koseni Lamini, to accompany Emeritus Justice Kampempe to the stage.
I request Emeritus Justice CC Kampempe to stand and the registrar to perform the investiture. Guests, I hereby declare that Emeritus Justice Sisi Kambembe has been elected and invested as Chancellor in accordance with the provisions of the Statute of the University of Pretoria. I now request the new Chancellor to deliver her inaugural address immediately after the choir has performed.
It is a great honor for me to address you today at my inauguration as Chancellor of this distinguished institution, the University of Pretoria. I am deeply humbled to have been nominated and elected to this position. I would like to thank the Electoral College of the University, comprising members of Council and Senate, and the president of the convocation for entrusting me with this very important role over the next five years. I would like to pay tribute to my predecessor, Professor Wiseman Guru, who provided three consecutive terms of faithful service. He leaves behind an indelible legacy. Through Professor Guru's unyielding commitment to excellence, 
and his intense desire to effect positive change, I am joining an institution that is stronger than ever before, having benefited from the valuable contribution of one of the most influential South Africans of our time. Thanks to the efficiency of UP archives, which preserves the university's history, I was easily able to revisit the 30th of September, 1977. This day, 45 years ago, coincides with the time when I was an undergraduate student at the University of Zululand. On this date, Turkey's student newspaper, the Perde Bay, today called the PTPY, invited average student swimmers to register and participate in the upcoming Interhouse Gala. It specified that no national or provincial swimmers were allowed in order to allow first-time competitors an equal chance. I was intrigued to travel back to this fairly innocuous moment in time and to consider how radically different the demographic context was from what we see today. Perhaps in some way, that underlying principle of promoting equality and efficiency, albeit within a very limited perspective, is what has helped enable the effective transformation of UP. The university has transformed into a dynamic community of staff and students who come from diverse backgrounds and cultures, showcasing South African and global societies. It is also a good reminder that while change can seem painfully slow when, measures, when measured in days, looking back over the years enabled one to realize the dramatic, cumulative impact of everyday actions. I have dedicated the past four decades of my legal career to upholding the principle of equality. Understandably, it is something that I am strongly passionate about. While the focus for many years in our country was on the attainment of a democratic society, that is something which we have now achieved. Our students, who played such a critical role in confronting the apartheid system in the fight for a just society, have a different fight now that of defending our democracy and constitution. In particular, they're fighting to improve the quality of life of all citizens in a society based on democratic values, social justice, and fundamental human rights. We remain a very unequal nation, facing myriad challenges. These manifest most noticeably in the unacceptably high rate of unemployment and the dignity robbing poverty, which still grips a large part of our society. Not to mention the inequality in our country, the highest in the land, which seemingly keeps widening. As a public university, we are by no means an ivory tower that is shut off from the realities of the world around us. In contrast, the investor of Pretoria's vision, strategic goals, and associated priorities boldly profess the pursuit of the public good. We are engaged. We are an engaged university, a central player in the advancement of our country and society at large. We are responsive to national priorities as well as global challenges and engage productively with our communities, industry, government, and non-governmental entities, and other partners while also learning from them. The steps taken to pursue trans and interdisciplinary research as a means to co-create knowledge-driven solutions to challenges which do not come neatly packaged to fit into academic silos are already bearing fruit. 
the university is progressing towards becoming a leading research intensive university in Africa, recognized internationally for its quality, relevance, and impact, developing people, creating knowledge, and making a difference locally and globally. There is little doubt that the University of Pretoria has a strong commitment to social responsibility embedded in its DNA. I am astounded by the breadth and depth of programs and areas where students and staff are contributing towards creating a society where every person lives well above the poverty line. As a microcosm of South African society in many ways, I am convinced that every person in this community would have a detailed response to Martin Luther King Jr.'s statement that life most persistent and most urgent question is, what are you doing for others? And yet, now is not the time to pause and reflect. Rather, it is time to brace ourselves for redoubled efforts as we take on challenges of our era. A South African poet, Wadi Sirote, in his poem, The Third World Express, posited, we need inspiration and discourse that would move us forward as Africans here at home and in the diaspora. An area that has been brought to attention in the South African University's Chancellor's Forum, which will require even high levels of sacrifice over the next five years and beyond, fundraising for the university in order to make up the shortfall in state funding that all universities currently face. I am sure you are aware of the critical challenge of the missing metal, which has sparked intense debate in South Africa over the past few years. While funding from the National Students' Financial Aid Schemes, NESFAS, has increased more than fivefold in six years. The solution has meant budget cuts in funds allocated to universities. This severely impacts on those students who come from working class households that do not qualify for funds from NESFAS but cannot afford higher education. The COVID-19 pandemic has worsened the situation more people are now employed and unable to pay their fees, where previously they could make a plan or take out a loan to get by. As Vice Chancellor and Professor Cooper has remarked, we are getting into a crisis that requires we think out of the box with partnerships across many stakeholders the University of Pretoria's most recent out-of-the-box solution, championed by Professor Cooper, is the Giving Day campaign, which was launched at the end of May this year in order to raise an additional 100 million, 100 million for major projects over the next three years. The initiative targets staff, students, alumni, the Executive Committee, and the University Council. It also has an international outlook focusing on alumni abroad as well as UP's foundation in the UK and the, U and the US. Large corporations and high net worth individual relationships. It aligns with the university's strategy to enhance access and, and successful student learning strengthen the university's research, international pro profile, and global engagement. We are also aiming to foster and sustain, and sustain a transformed, inclusive, and equitable university community, enhance institutional sustainability, and strengthen the university's social responsiveness and impact in society. The funds raised will be used to support students. This includes tuition fees and costs associated with accommodation, textbooks, 
food and devices for academically deserving students whose families cannot afford their study costs. Other key projects which will receive funding include the Faculty of Veterinary Sciences on the Report Veterinary Academic Hospital, tax sports, and a range of research programs across all faculties that contribute to South Africa's sustainable development. Once again, UP's concern for the common good was put on display on 25 July when the Giving Day campaign culminated in a fun event on campus. There was a carnival-like atmosphere and students and, and, and staff enjoyed delicious food and entertainment. This event will be held again in 2023 and 2024 with a view of it becoming an annual feature. While the main aim is to raise funds, it is also further and to entrench the culture of philanthropy at the university, as giving needs to become part of everyone's mindset. The philosophy of giving extends beyond financial donations and, and can take on many forms. These include mentoring, participating as guest lecturers, or sitting on advisory or industry boards for university centers, institutes, faculties, and professional programs. Why, you might ask, must we increase our giving when already we are all feeling financially stressed in the face of rising costs? Our motivations for giving might differ from individual to individual. But collectively, as a university community, we are deeply influenced by the concept of Ubuntu, an idea that we are dependent rather than isolated beings. As we are supported, guided, and inspired by so many people in our own journeys, we are in a position to intend to help others. During the height of the COVID-19 crisis, we saw this embedded ethic come to the fore as staff and students rallied to assist those in need. Mobile networks collaborated with universities to provide low-cost internet access. Alumni donated laptops, and we learned that we can do far more together than we can alone. And so let us carry this sense of compassionate agency forward as we give even when it hurts. Let us remember our fight. As Nigerian novelist and poet Chinua Achebe said in Antilles of Savannah, while we do our good works, let us not forget that the real solution lies in a world where charity will have become unnecessary. 28 years ago, we witnessed the birth of our democratic society. We were filled with optimism and hope for a bright future ahead. Sadly, much of that hope has been eroded, with corruption at the highest government level having eaten away at our nation's soul. The disintegration of our systems and public infrastructure leaves us vulnerable on top of the heavy toll of poverty and unemployment on millions who are struggling to make ends meet. Crime is a profound and widespread problem, as is the scourge of gender-based violence and femicide, an issue close to my heart in the fight for social justice. There have been few occasions when it has seemed like our country is at breaking point Many diagnosed our country as being in crisis with a prognosis of dim prospects of success. We can and should transform our country to be strong and vibrant. We need to have positive attitudes and discipline without which we cannot develop. We must overcome inertia 
as we live in an era of many opportunities. However, these opportunities are more difficult to achieve with negative attitudes and the lack of discipline. The cumulative impact of various groups, our courageous and independent media, our judiciary, our everyday citizens has kept us from the edge. Their actions have changed the course of history and will continue to do so. Allow me to travel with, allow me to travel with me 45 years into the future. In 2067, what will the headline of today's PDBY be? More importantly, will UP still have a presence amongst the top 1.9% of universities worldwide? Will we be producing high caliber African graduates who lead the way in producing cutting edge research and devising innovative solutions to the world's problem? Will we have successfully embraced the fourth industrial revolution in order to have achieved our continent's digital transformation agenda? Will our unwavering commitment to social responsibility and to establishing a community that fosters diversity and inclusion with equal access to students have made us an asset to our country? As we stand at this critical crossroads, let me quote from Mangela, Ma Maya Angelou's most well-known poem, Still I'll Rise. Might our country now be asking, did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries, let us really now, let us do what we can with what we have, where we are to ensure that the answer is, as Angelo says in verse three, just like moons and like suns, with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I'll rise. As your chancellor, I commit to doing everything that I can to continue navigating the investor of Pretoria along the intentional road it is marking out towards long-term societal impact, change, and sustainability. I thank you. Take your seats.
I now request the following representatives to convey their congratulations to the Chancellor. On behalf of the University Council, Mr. Kuzeni Chamini, academic staff, Professor Elsa B. Schumann. On behalf of professional services staff, Dr. Carol Nonguelo. On behalf of alum alumni, Dr. Hena Koster. On behalf of students, Ms. Tito Mashile. On behalf of the unions, Mr. Eugene Maluleke. On behalf of Deputy Directors General, finally the Deputy Director General, Department of Higher Education, Science and Innovation, Dr. Marcia Sotekwa. Good day, everyone gathered here on this very auspicious occasion. On behalf of the University of Pretoria Council, I would like to congratulate Justice Sisi Kampempe on her appointment and installation as the new Chancellor of our university. As is well recognized, Justice Kampempe is celebrated for her role in strengthening the rule of law in South Africa, her judicial bravery, and her firm commitment to justice for everyone. We know her to be a jurist of vast intellect uncompromising integrity, kindness, humility, and quiet strength. Justice Kampempe, you are a true ambassador for South Africa in every respect, and we are thrilled to gain a leader who upholds the values and character that UP requires in its chancellor, as well as the qualities which we seek to develop in our students. At the University of Pretoria, we know that as much as it is important to produce a high caliber of graduates who transform the corporate and research landscape through innovative thinking, it is important to help shape a generation who value honesty, hard work, tolerance, and respect for others. On a number of occasions, Justice Kampempe has been asked what her motto for success has been throughout her career. She has responded that it is quite simply to remain steadfast and work hard. Remaining focused and persistent in pursuit of your goals amid distractions can be a challenge, she says, but this is when hard work and nothing but hard work becomes imperative. I was struck that this message is particularly refreshing in a time when there is enormous pressure on our young people. Competition is healthy, but we do not all have the same level of natural talent and ability. Even then, talent without ambition won't make a person go far enough. Being prepared to acquire skills, says Justice Kampempe, coupled with de determination and a desire to grow, leads to success. And hence, student success is of paramount importance at the University of Pretoria. And we look forward to building on the foundation of your wisdom as we strategically 
work towards this goal. UP is one of the country's largest producers of graduates, with 2019 statistics showing that 11.7% of undergraduate degrees awarded by the 13 South African traditional universities were UP degrees, with engineering and veterinary science accounting for 26.7% and 100% of the pool, respectively. Considering postgraduate qualifications, the university produced 19.5% of all master's degrees and 15.4% of all doctoral degrees. UP continues to make significant strides with regards to student access and success, with a percentage of black undergraduate students increasing from 45.2% in 2012 to 61.5% in 2021. The university is committed to ensuring that transformation permeates every aspect of UP, ensuring that the institution is home to students and staff populations that represent South Africa's rich diversity, and that everyone feels welcomed, supported, included, and valued in such a way that they are able to thrive, creating an enabling environment in which individuals can flourish is another principle which Justice Kampempe has lived by. Justice Kampempe has strived to use her position and title to help others with opportunities to grow and learn. She reminds us that as we progress towards our goals, we must never make the advancement about ourselves, but instead look out for others who need to climb as well. This is closely linked with her leadership philosophy, which is to be approachable, inviting others to bring their voices to the fore before making any meaningful decisions. And in that way, creating space for everyone to be heard. As the UP Council, we look forward to the privilege of working alongside you, Justice Kampembe, as you serve out your appointment in the years that lie ahead. We have much to learn from you and look forward to benefiting from your valuable contribution. I thank you. Good morning, everybody. Today is a joyous occasion, welcoming Emeritus Justice Sisi Kampepe to the University of Pretoria as our new Chancellor. Justice Kampepe has had a distinguished legal career, obtaining a Master's in Law from Harvard University, entering legal practice, and ultimately being appointed as a judge of the Constitutional Court. Today, I want to focus briefly on two aspects of her legal career that are most relevant for us as a university. First, Justice Kampepe used her legal expertise to serve the community and society in a variety of roles. As a TRC commissioner, overseeing elections in Zimbabwe and Uganda, chairing the Kampepe Commission, looking into the Directorate of Special Operations, as a member of the Black Lawyers Association and many others. When we look at our strategic, strategic goals and what we aim to achieve as a university, one of those is to strengthen the university's social responsiveness and impact in society. In an academic context, this means that we have to equip our students with the skills and graduate attributes that will enable them to contribute purposefully and constructively to society while they are studying and also when they graduate and go out into the world. This is not only a function of the academic program. It is imperative that we develop the whole person so that our students become responsible citizens, well aware of their duty to promote, amongst other things, the values of our constitutional democracy, such as social justice, and to tackle the challenges of the 21st century head on in order to advance humanity and to make this world a better place for all. In this regard, Justice Kampepe 
is the ultimate role model. And as a university, we draw inspiration from her career as a lawyer in service of our country and society. Despite a demanding professional career as a legal practitioner and ultimately as a judge, she never let an opportunity go by to use her legal expertise and experience to contribute to society. When called upon to serve her country, she never hesitated. Today, we are immensely grateful that she answered our call to become the first female chancellor of the University of Pretoria. The second aspect that I wish to focus on is Justice Kampepe's unwavering commitment to fight for and empower vulnerable members of society. This started early on in her career when she represented workers in the fight against unjust laws. She also represented voiceless sectors of society, such as hawkers. This aligns well with one of our other strategic goals, namely to foster and sustain a transformed, inclusive and equitable university community. All the evils playing out in the world out there threaten university communities too, presenting us with unique challenges in our microcosm of society. The worldwide scourge of gender-based violence, intolerance of diversity, attacks on freedom of speech and lack of critical debate pose huge challenges for us. Our constitution guarantees, amongst other things, protection of dignity, life, security of person and bodily integrity, as well as freedom of religion, belief and opinion, and freedom of expression. These are the values that we strive to embed in our university community to advance inclusivity and equitability in transforming our constitution. In particular, Justice Kampepe has spoken out against femicide and violence against women, stating emphatically that women should be protected, not because they are weak, but because they are vulnerable. In addition, the intersectional challenges that, face, that women face must be acknowledged. Importantly, we must also acknowledge the lived reality of survivors of all kinds of discrimination in order to inform an appropriate response. Again, Justice Kampepe, with all her experience on the bench and her involvement in society, will provide invaluable guidance to us as a university to advance our goal of fostering a transformed, inclusive and equitable community. Finally, I leave you with a quote from one of Justice Kampepe's last judgments, where she said, I too cherish the ideal of a democratic and free society in which all persons are both as equal in opportunity as they are in accountability before the law. Chancellor Kampepe, on behalf of the academic staff, we congratulate and salute you as the new Chancellor of the University of Pretoria. Good morning. It's a great pleasure and honor to convey our heartiest congratulations on your election as Chancellor of the University of Pretoria. The Chancery of an institution of higher learning carries the weighty mandate of upholding and defending finest traditions of the academy and leading it into unknown territory at times. Your inauguration today is a testament to your high esteem among the university's diverse stakeholders. These are testing times in our country's higher education and research sector, the continent and beyond. It therefore falls to the most gifted and public spirited amongst our eminent citizens to answer the call as you have. We are confident that your stellar record as a jurist during your critical the critical founding years of our democracy and continued service will greatly benefit the university and the communities it serves. You are a sterling role model for staff and students in our efforts to advance social justice in our daily activities and broader areas of influence. 
The University of Pretoria has a long-standing track record in advancing research and scholarship. We look forward to intensifying our contributions and positive impact on society during your tenure. Wishing you spiritual strength and good health as you embark on yet another incredible journey in service. On behalf of the University of Pretoria's professional service departments, congratulations. Greetings to Emeritus Justice Sisi Gambembe, the first female chancellor of the University of Pretoria. I'd like to further extend my greetings to the Honorable Minister of Higher Education and Science and Innovation, um, Minister Bladen Zimande, and the Deputy Director who's here on his behalf, the University of Pretoria Management, members of council, the SRC, the workers' unions, this, and the student community of the University of Pretoria. It is my honor to stand here today and address you as we inaugurate a new chancellor. Judging by the caliber of our newly elected chancellor and her numerous contributions to society, we are confident in her ability to continue the facilitation of transformation to the university. Transformation speaks to, a multi to multiple arrays of factors. The most important is for every single student to be given the means to thrive in this institution, regardless of class, regardless of race, regardless of gender. With this said, there is a need for those who are underprivileged to be given the same means and dignity as those who are privileged. My apologies. Access is not infused of organic, inter, of organic uh, turbulence. The efforts from the university are not enough if not moderated and continuously improved. We are well aware of how rooted poverty is in the country's townships and in the country's rural areas. Therefore, how children of the poor and the working class are treated cannot be in the same line as how we treat everyone else above their class. Survival of the fittest does not omit context, context, privilege and domination. In essence, financial holds should be held back for us students who tend to be unable to afford free education. An African-guided consideration should emerge, if not dominate, in the minds of those who are tasked with configurating their fees. While one of the roles of Justice Gambembe will be to confer all degrees and awards to the students of the University of Pretoria, we ask that you contribute to ensuring that the journey of all students leads up to this point and moment. We hope that you'll be instrumental to this. Justice as young women, we hope to find expression in you. We look up to your contributions and ask that we are given the means to make more contributions to our diverse society. This starts here and in this university. Justice Kampempe, we ask that you use this position to advocate for the rights of students. And we, we want you to know, as young women in this institution, that we see you as a role model. We see you in us. Sorry, we see us in you. <laughs> as, as, we, as you embark on, into this new journey, may you contribute to making this university a space where young women can thrive. In the same breath, we hope that the university will assist marginalized students to succeed. As we stand here as students, our one request to you, Justice, is that you aid all students through advocating for transformation, through advocating for access, through advocating for safety, and for this environment to be conducive for all students to, to thrive. We vest our confidence in you as the Chancellor of the University, and we have no doubt in your abilities. 
We wish you all the best. We want to say congratulations. And we want you to know, Justice, that, that as students of the university, we'll be here in whatever way to aid you in your journey. And we want to say welcome to the University of Pretoria. Thank you. Looks like I, <coughs> I didn't present any uh, present anything. Let me just hold on. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the University of Pretoria Convocation, which includes almost 300,000 university graduates across the world. It is an honor and privilege for me to first welcome all the distinguished guests at this very historic event where the University of Pretoria is inaugurating its first woman or female chancellor, Justice Sisi Kampepe, former judge of the South Africa's Constitutional Court, who took over from Professor Wiseman Nkulu on 28 June 2022, and who had served the university with great distinction in the role of chancellor for the past 15 years. However, most important today and on behalf of the entire convocation, I want to express my sincere congratulations to you, Justice Sisi Kampepe, on your appointment as the new Chancellor of the University of Pretoria and wish you well and success in your new role. We know as the Chancellor of the University, you officially are the ceremonial or symbolic head of the institution. But together with the executive of the convocation, you will also play an important role in representing the interest of all its graduates and especially strive to enhance the global reputation of the university. Justice Kampepe, you are described in many regard as an apt figurehead of the University of Pretoria and what the institution is actually recognized for. When looking further at your CV and past experience with four decades of service in the legal field, 12 years of them in the constitutional court, it is evident that you have made an indelible mark in legal circles, and we look forward that you will now come to this position to contribute as much in a similar way to the University of Pretoria and its challenging educational and social environment. We know you are a highly respected woman with vast intellect, uncompromising integrity, grace, and diligence, and would like you to use your past experience as well as your legacy and respected public image in serving this new position with the same commitment and level of guidance, but adjust the focus and application thereof to an entirely different community, namely the University of Pretoria, a high educational institution with different needs and expectations from the one you may have served a large part of your career. This new role expects beneficial guidance in the best interest of the entire University of Pretoria community, irrespective of race, color, gender, and religion, as it will be key in furthering a diverse and inclusive University of Pretoria community, with UP's main goal and vision to be a leading research intensive university in Africa, recognized internationally for its quality, relevance, and impact, and also creating knowledge by producing well-educated, well-trained, graduates and professionally skilled people across the board who can address local and global challenges and contribute to economic and social development and help create the society envisaged in our constitution. We also want you to know that we are proud as UP alumni that our alma mater is the largest contact university in South Africa and is one of the top producers of PhDs in the country and regarded as a national and international leader in research. University's research as a national, uh, the university's research and education certainly makes a decisive difference to South Africa and Africa's futures. And we want to see that its focus and international recognition stays that way in its, its most recent official rankings, both locally and international, continue to improve. We have no doubt that your respect, public profile, broad network, and future involvement in your role as chancellor will positively contribute to not only the university's profile, rankings and visibility, but also to fundraising efforts and attracting donations, both locally and internationally, as we have become more dependent on such financial resources, given the li limited governmental support local universities in general receive. 
I'm sure I talk on behalf of most, if not all, alumni, uh, UPA alumni members that we support the University of Pretoria's Council's decision to have you take over as Chancellor of this proud institution. Therefore, we are looking forward for you to continue the great strides made, not only in Professor Nkulu's tenure, but also before that, in positioning the University of Pretoria as an institution that is a welcoming home to some of the greatest minds across South Africa, Africa and well beyond. We know you will be a true ambassador for the university as you epitomize the values and character that the University of Pretoria requires in its chancellor and the qualities we seek to develop in our students to further enhance the University of Pretoria's employer reputation and positioning the University of Pretoria as the number one university in Africa and one of the top universities over a diverse base of criteria and across all ranking bodies in the world. You truly stand on the shoulders of the giants before you, but we are sure you have more than the right criteria to follow in the footsteps of these extraordinary people. Finally, I hope that as president and part of the executive of the University of Pretoria Convocation, we can work closely together to achieve our common goals for the University of Pretoria. Not to promote our own ideologies, but be apolitical, all in service of the University of Pretoria's core functions, and that is to develop and create knowledge to meet current and future societal needs. So Justice Kampepe, once again, welcome aboard. We are proud to have you as Chancellor, and we wish you a very successful initial five years term as a Chancellor of the University of Pretoria and a special and highly memorable experience. Thank you. Uh, workers, uh, student, union leaders, student leaders, vice chancellor and principal, executive management, guests from different institutions, and everyone here today, including those who are attending through a virtual platform. Abushini, Dumacheroni, good morning. A very warm and revolutionary greetings to our own as well as our celebrant of the day. Chancellor Justice C.C. Virginia Kampepe. Kampepe. I am standing here today representing all labor unions at the University of Pretoria, which comprises of APSA, Nehau, and IPTU. On this very special occasion, the inauguration of Justice C.C. Kampepe as the Chancellor of the University of Pretoria. Ladies and gentlemen, let me share with you why I refer to Justice Kampepe as one of our own as labor movements in the University of Pretoria. This is attributed to the fact that Justice Kampepe built her own legal career in fighting for rights of workers. After being admitted as an attorney in 1985, she established her own law firm practicing under the name S.V. Kampepe Attorneys. Her law firm was especially renowned for defending the rights of workers against unjust laws and unfair employment practices. She represented unions affiliated to NACTU and COSATU. She was also a national advisor of SACAO. As Justice Kampepe describes herself, she is a labor lawyer at heart through and through, as labor unions will definitely learn and benefit a lot from her wealth of knowledge in labor law as we continue to fight for transformation, equality, better working conditions of workers at the University of Pretoria. Today, we are witnessing a historical moment of the inauguration of the first black female chancellor at the University of Pretoria. It is a proud moment for us and an honor to share in the festivities as workers. However, this historical moment must be seen as a step to accelerating the transformation agenda of the University of Pretoria, because a lot still needs to be done in this front. The labor movement as representatives of workers, we wish you well, Mama. We are firmly behind you and believe that you will achieve great success in this role. Rise, Justice Kampepe, rise. Thank you very much.
Can I go ahead? Good afternoon, Professor Nkulu, Chair of Council, Members of Council, Vice Chancellor of UP and Senior Management, Senators, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is my singular honor and privilege to represent the Department of Higher Education and Training at this auspicious event. Justice Kampempe. Recently, Justice Cameron was inaugurated as Chancellor at the University of Stellenbosch. He Well, I guess this is what load shedding does, and uh, we have to get accustomed to how it will become part of our lives. Um, let me start again. Professor Nkulu, Chair of Council, Members of Council, Vice Chancellor of UP and Senior Management, Senators, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. It is my singular honor and privilege to represent the Department of Higher Education and Training at this auspicious event. Justice Kampempe. Recently, Justice Cameron was inaugurated as Chancellor at the University of Stellenbosch. He promised to advance his commitment to justice. The department is appreciative that yet another legal giant has joined the sector. Our minister has been provided with a partner in the fight against gender-based violence a partner in you, and I have no doubt he will turn to your council to ensure that violence against women is eroded, especially in our institutions. We welcome you, Judge Sisi Kampempe, and we are delighted that the higher education fraternity have come in numbers to pay tribute to a remarkable and distinguished woman leader. We are appreciative that your family members supported and endorsed your new role. A synopsis of your journey reveals that the legend here before us was a scholar par excellence of jur jurisprudence. Justice Kampempe has been appointed by several presidents of our constitutional democracy during her tenure in the legal, legal domain, an indication of her stature and respected just judgments. Justice Sisi Kampempe, we look forward to your contribution to the sector and further development of sustainable universities in a diversified higher education system which strives to expand access to every single student who seeks to learn. Whilst UP has contracted you 
to a tutelarial justice kangpempe, you will soon discover that chancellors have formed South African University's Chancellors Association, in short, SAFCA, an association which collectively seeks to ensure that the agency of chancellors is enhanced for the benefit of advancing the cause of scholarship. We will soon be consulting SAFCA as we finalize the fees model, which we have just recently presented to cabinet, as reported by our minister recently. I wish to conclude with the words of a famous, fearless South African, Trevor Noah, who said not so long ago, we spend so much time being afraid of failure, afraid of rejection, but regret is the thing we should fear the most. Failure is an answer. Rejection is an answer. Regret is an eternal question you will never have an answer to. I am confident, Justice Kampempe, that you will not regret. And regret will not feature in your experience in the sector. We hope that the next five years will be as rewarding as it is challenging. I am happy to say this sector is a resilient one. We have pushed technologies to the limit. We have emerged stronger. We are more focused. And we must continue to express appreciation to the academic staff across the country whose commitment is immeasurable and enduring. To our students who strive to make a better future for themselves and society. We must thank the leadership whose commitment is there and quite evident. We wish you all the best, Justice Kampempe. I thank you. Now that we're back on track, thank you for your patience. I would now like to thank the following colleagues from within as well as from outside the university for participating in the program today. Chairperson of Council, Mr. Kuseni Lamini, the Vice Chancellor and Principal, Professor Tawana Kupe, the Registrar, Professor Caroline Nicholson, representative of the academic staff, Professor Elsa B. Schumann, Representative of the professional services staff, Prof. Uh, Dr. Carol Nonguelo. Representative of the alumni, chairperson of the UP convocation, Dr. Hina Koster. Representative of the student, president of the SRC, Ms. Tito Mashile. Representative of the unions, chairpersons, chairperson of APSA union branch, Mr. Eugene Malileke the Deputy Director from the Department of Higher Education, Science and Innovation, Dr. Marcia Sotkwikwa. Furthermore, I'd like to extend a heartfelt thank you to our, perform uh, for, to our performers from Tax Camerata under the leadership of Dr. Michael Barrett and Ovua Cultural Ensemble with their conductor, Mr. Mkoli Saduda, whose participation lent such luster to today's occasion. And finally, on behalf of you all, I would like to thank the participants in today's program, as well as the members of the Department of Institutional Advancement, members of the, De of the Department of Security Services, and other members of staff from various support service departments who have been involved in the arrangements for the function today. Thank you.
We have now come to the end of the formal proceedings of this event. Before we close, I wish to invite all present to the reception outside in the foyer. You are requested to stand for the singing of the national anthem and to remain standing until the assembly has been dissolved and the academic procession has left the auditorium. By the powers vested in me, I hereby dissolve this assembly of the University of Pretoria.